How much would you pay for a vacation where these disaster relief tents were your hotel and this sandwich was your gourmet meal? Oh, and the toilets are nasty and hard to find and you can't escape. Would you pay $1,000 maybe? Perhaps $12,000? Because one to $12,000 is exactly how much people paid for this experience, though they didn't mean to. What they thought they were getting was a festival with influencers and celebrities galore, from Kendall Jenner to Bella Hadid, a festival that everyone would be jealous to know that you're at that would make for the most enviable Instagram posts. If you don't know what I'm talking about yet, I am talking about the Fire Festival, a 2017 festival that left people scrambling for food and shelter, all while being trapped on a remote island. A festival built on the oh-so-human impulse to not want to miss out. So what does a situation like Fire Festival say about our culture of FOMO and how it keeps us poor? Let's talk about it. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Kara and I talk about the intersection of money, media, and intentional living. And if you like this video, afterwards you should check out my video, How Designer Brands Keep You Poor or let's talk about social media's aesthetic obsession. All right, so this is not the first time that we have seen FOMO on such a large scale, and it certainly won't be the last. We saw it more recently with the rise of crypto schemes in the last couple of years. Stories of Dogecoin millionaires had people dumping their life savings to invest in these supposedly incredible propositions driven by the fear of not wanting to miss out on their chance to get rich, but instead being left having lost everything they worked so hard to save. Go back to the 1800s and we see the same kind of stamp peed towards false promises of wealth with the gold rush that started in 1848. The gold rush attracted 300,000 people in its seven years, many of them throwing away their life savings to chase gold. Some found a lot, others didn't. And the smartest ones, well, they were selling shovels. But FOMO culture is more alive than ever, I would argue, especially with the rise of social media. Financially, FOMO doesn't just affect the investments we make. It also impacts the clothes we wear, the houses and the cars that we buy, and the lifestyles we live. Why else do people camp out overnight just to buy the latest iPhone? Is it because they just happened to drop their phone in the toilet that morning and the rice route wasn't working? Or is it because Apple has carefully curated a consumer market that thrives on the idea of the in crowd and thus encouraging our FOMO impulses. At the heart of FOMO is our most prevalent negative emotions from jealousy to insecurity. As explained in the Brazilian Journal of Psychiatry, quote, FOMO has been defined in scientific literature as involving two specific primary components. A, apprehension that others are having rewarding experiences from which one is absent. And B, the persistent desire to stay connected with people in one social network. The piece goes on to explain that anxiety and the pursuit of relieving that anxiety through compulsions are the feelings and behaviors that can be associated with FOMO. When we think about FOMO, we often think about it manifesting only as someone who's just checking their Snapchat or their Instagram to see if their friends are doing something cool without them, which is certainly a form that aligns with the anxiety and compulsions that we just described. But what fascinates me is how the FOMO compulsion can go a step beyond and end up impacting our relationship with money. As I've mentioned on this channel before, money is is emotional. People like to frame personal finance as if it's just cold hard facts and rules. But to me, the real important relationship with money is the emotional relationship. This is why I spend so much time on this channel not just talking through the vocab like what is a 401k or a brokerage, because I feel like that can only go so far in helping someone's financial health. The information is already out there and accessible for anyone if they want to find it. The tougher part of the financial journey for most of us is understanding how our emotions, our mindsets, our psychology, and the influences around us affect our financial health. And as Schwab's 2019 Modern Wealth Index survey shows, my gosh, are our spending and saving habits influenced by others. According to Schwab survey results, quote, more than a third of Americans admit their spending habits have been influenced by images and experiences shared by their friends on social media and confess they spend more than they can afford to avoid missing out on the fun. At the same time, there is this collective confusion about how people are even affording the lifestyles that they portray on social media. Three fifths of Americans focus more on how their friends spend rather than save, and an equal amount don't understand how their friends afford the expensive trips trips and meals they post about. And when people do spend time with their friends, 35% of survey respondents spent more money than they can afford to participate in experiences with friends. Gang, 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 gang. gang. <laughs>
period, laughing yeah, my yeah, ass bitch. off. It's like some Ponzi scheme where everyone is throwing money in to flaunt this wealth that is actually an illusion. Sure, some people do have that money, whether it's through generational wealth or a high paying job, but other times people are living way beyond their means through credit cards, which is incredibly dangerous and unsustainable, or they're simply faking it. Like how there are literal studios where you can pretend that you are on a private jet so you can take lots of pictures. Now, don't get me wrong, I do not think that social media created FOMO culture by any means. The FOMO phenomenon is arguably an integral part of the human story. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if cavemen were all vying over the same mammoth loincloth back in the day. But I will say that it seems like social media has put FOMO culture into hyperdrive. I found personally that I crave new things a lot less and I compared myself to others a lot less once I deleted Instagram off my phone. And even more so once I deleted TikTok off my phone. This isn't to say that I never use them, but cutting down on my social media time has had an obvious effect on the way I spend money and the way I feel about myself. So if you're looking to minimize social media's impact on your FOMO impulse, I highly recommend removing the social media apps off your phone, silencing the notifications for any social media apps or shopping apps, because all of those things Things are just noise. Think about it this way. Say you have earbuds on and you're trying to listen to music, but you're standing in the middle of a concert. If you want to hear your own music, if you want more clarity around what you actually desire rather than what the people around you desire, you're gonna have to turn down the volume of the music that surrounds you. Feeling like we're missing out can feel like we're falling behind. We're not on trend, we aren't having as much fun, and we're not as happy as the people we went to school with or the celebrities that sprinkle our screens. All of this drives us to make decisions that might not be in our best interest. It might drive us to spend money that we can't afford to spend or are things that we're not even interested in. Sometimes the only reason we're doing something is because we're worried we're supposed to be doing it. Marketers know the FOMO impulse well. They are active participants in the FOMO culture when they position their product or service as something you don't want to miss out on. Miss out on it and you risk not becoming the best version of yourself. The version with shinier hair, whiter teeth, cooler sunglasses. This this LinkedIn article breaks down the FOMO-inspired marketing techniques well, from how Netflix benefits from the word-of-mouth popularity of Stranger Things that makes those who don't watch feel out of the loop, to how Spotify's Discover Weekly playlists that disappear after seven days create a limited availability that entices users to keep coming back. Now this isn't to claim that marketing or social media are inherently evil because I think there's a lot of good things that can come out of both. But what I think is dangerous is our impulse to channel our money, our time, our energy into things that don't really align with us. That we are only chasing in the pursuit of not being excluded by some imaginary group. The way I think of it, the internet and social media have created a panopticon effect. A panopticon is a design or concept where people are constantly being watched, but they don't know when. It's like a prison with cells arranged around a central tower. The idea is that constant surveillance makes people behave a certain way because they never know if they're being watched. With social media, we are constantly observing and following other people online to a degree that people might not fully internalize. We're not only watching others live their lives, which can elicit feelings of FOMO, but we're also acutely aware that we might be getting watched too. This can change how we behave, how we present ourselves to the world, and all the clothes and cars that we might buy. On the topic of the panopticon effect, another way the internet traps us into the panopticon is through data privacy. This is why I want to talk to you about today's sponsor, Delete Me. I know, it's a great transition. <laughs> So Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that will remove your personal information that's being sold online. Because companies collect data from us all the time, which can make it easy for others to search and learn about you. Whether it's your name, current and former addresses, your age, your phone number. And as someone who is an online presence of sorts, and especially as a woman on the internet, it can be scary and dangerous having that information floating around. This is why I was really excited to use Delete Me myself. The process was super simple. I submitted my information to Delete Me, and from there, there experts find and remove my personal data from tons of data brokers online. Doing this myself would have taken tens of hours and honestly, I wouldn't have even known where to start. So it was so nice to have Delete Me do it all for me. Not to mention with Delete Me, they continue to scan and remove my personal information every three months, every time sending me a detailed report. I got my report and I was shocked how many places had my personal information. Delete Me reviewed over 2,600 listings and they removed 69 total listings from across 44 data brokers. 
brokers. There's information out there on my address, my name, my age, but now those listings have all been removed thanks to Delete Me. If you're interested in getting your own detailed report and having your personal information stay private, you can use my discount code Kara for 20% off. That's code Kara at joindeleteme.com slash Kara, which I'll link below. Thank you so much to Delete Me for sponsoring this video. So what's hard about FOMO is that, like I mentioned earlier in the video, it not only tugs at the part of ourselves that are social creatures, that desire social acceptance and community, but at the worst end of the spectrum, it feeds off our anxiety, insecurity, and jealousy. It's interesting to think about how we might live our lives if we didn't worry so much about what our family, friends, neighbors, strangers on the internet think about us. Would that change how we perceive ourselves or how we spend our money and our time? Thinking back to the Fire Festival example, many of the attendees bought into Fire Festival because of the social status it could offer. Yes, the event was advertised as a fun time with lots of cool things to do, but the real psychological magic was struck when they added an element of the in-crowd, an exclusivity that created clear definitions. You're either with us or you're missing out. And that manufactured exclusivity is what truly drove the exorbitant prices people were willing to fork over money for. Manufactured exclusivity is a concept that I also cover in my video, How Designer Brands Keep You Poor, because designer brands work off that same type of FOMO impulse. We want what is sold to us as special, especially if someone else has it and we don't. Not having something that is marketed as fantastic, awe-inducing, and unique makes us beg the question to ourselves: are we none of those things? What's wrong with us for not having it? What I wanna offer here is an idea that has really helped me when facing FOMO. And that is that we are always missing out on something. Every choice that we make comes with an opportunity cost. Even not making a choice comes with an opportunity cost. I remember asking my brother once what it is that I should do in life, what path I should take. I was like, should I be a baker or a CEO, a doctor or an author? And that's a natural question about what your life path should be. But I was admittedly being a little neurotic about it. And his response was that, if I'm always going to obsess over the what ifs, I'm always going to be looking at all the other paths that I could have taken, I'm never gonna actually be happy. And I think that same lesson can be applied to money. Every dollar we spend towards one thing is a dollar that can't go to another. If you spend money on a Tesla, that same money can't be used towards your wardrobe or your savings. That's just how it works. And that is why it is so important to consciously prioritize the different areas of your life and to be thoughtful and intentional about where you spend your money and your time on. Now, everyone's priority list will be a little different, and that'll therefore impact the way that they might budget. For some, spending money on an expensive dinner with friends might be aligned with their priorities, and so ideally, that type of person will section off more of their monthly budget to experiences like that. But for others, the expensive dinner just isn't aligned. When that happens, we have to exercise financial boundaries with friends and family. And this can be really hard, because you don't want to seem like the buzzkill, and that FOMO urge can be extra strong when you see all your friends out doing something that you're not a part of. But good friends shouldn't dismiss you for financial boundaries. You might not make every lavish dinner or trip with them, but there can be options to do a potluck at home or a day trip to a nearby town. Being able to say no, to offer alternative options, and to stick by your financial boundaries are incredibly useful to protecting your peace and to protecting your wallet. All right, the last thing I'm going to mention on this topic is that there is always going to be the next big thing. I promise you there is no shortage of next big things to pour your money into, whether it's a product or a trip or some crypto scheme. And those will be flashy, they will be interesting, and some of them might even be worth it for you to put your money into. But my friends, do not underestimate how cool financial stability is. And I realize how lame a statement that sounds, but behind the boring vocab word of financial security, there is peace, there is stability, there is comfort. And those might be demonized as dull sometimes, but I really do think that they can give rise to a lot of long-term contentment. So if we're gonna have FOMO over anything, why not be FOMO over financial security? But what do you think? Do you feel like FOMO has impacted your relationship with yourself and with money? Or do you feel like the impact is like, pretty overhyped. Let me know in the comments below. And thank you also to one of my patrons for suggesting this video topic. If you have any suggestions, leave them down below. And if you want to support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee, you can do so with the links in the description. And for more videos like this, you might like my video, Let's Talk About Social Media's Aesthetic Obsession. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!